Hello everyone. Welcome to Rural Water Resources Management course. This is the last NPTEL course for this uh, Rural Water Resource Management. This is week 12 and lecture 1. In the past weeks, we have been looking at how to understand the Rural Water Resource Management theme. We also looked at different data sets that can help us to uh, monitor this precious water resource in rural uh, settings. And we also looked at some data sets in the previous week. Let us look at some more data sets that are very important for the weeks to come. Before that, I would like to do a recap of week 11 and how it is linked to week 12. We have been doing this recaps every class or at least by every week. Uh, but last week we did not do it because of a lot of data information that we were discussing. So let's do that uh, for this week so that we have the continuity. So in week 11, we looked at rural water databases which can be coming from published literature and that literature can come from NGOs or scientific papers, journal articles. I explained how to cite them, how to use these data. And then we had the state agencies and central agencies housed in different databases. Of the databases, we were looking at WRIS database and then we looked at rainfall, um, and then storage capacity uh, to be in particular. So as per the um, equation we had for water balance, uh, there are some more data that is important for understanding the rural water management. And that is where we would be focusing on today. For example, uh, in week uh, 11, we looked at the Central agencies databases, right? We looked at week 11 um, rainfall from IMD, uh, ISRO database, and the state agencies. But in week 12, we will look at rural water databases, uh, under which we will look at river discharge, soil moisture, evapotranspiration, remote sensing data. These are all clubbed together in the water balance equation and a net water availability is measured. How do you measure it? In this cl class, I'll also show you that you measure it using a hydrological model. There are multiple models, but because of the time crunch, we will only look at one model and an introduction to the model called SWOT. So uh, we have been using this WRIS website uh, so far to look at uh, the uh, data set uh, for different uh, themes, surface water, storage, groundwater, river, uh, all these are coming from the WRIS website. On the same note, we will be looking at uh, India WRIS for the river discharge. So I will show you now how to go about in selecting this website and getting into the river database. Network. I hope the screen is visible with the India WRIS. What you see in the home page is again all the data sources. We will go to water data, surface water, storage. We have already looked at. We are coming to river. In the river data, there is a river information. So basically, what this river information uh, database has is the names and shapes of different river networks in India. And just close this X mark. And these are the bigger basins. So when you zoom in, just double click it. You can slowly see the Ganges main river networks coming up. And then the tributaries also come up. So you see the main river channel, which is dark blue. 
uh, and then you have the small uh, tributaries uh, which are forming around it. If you go zoom in further, you could see more bifurcation of this river into smaller components. You see now these small, small lines are coming and then they are coming. So this has been very accurately and deeply uh, monitored and measured using multiple methods by the government and they stack it here as a database. Um, it's more to visualize and to understand the river and that's why it's called a river info system. Let us now get back to the river data. Okay, so you have to go to river and river monitoring. When you click river monitoring, again, based on your internet and your computing speed, you would see the same dashboard that we have been seeing always for all the other parameters. So first an India map opens. And then slowly it has a default time. Here the default time is 1st June 2021 to 5th April. Today's date, uh, 2022. Okay. Uh, and across India, where is the data available? You could see that the coloring has come up. And what does this color refer to? The color is, um, you have gray color means there's no data. So each point is a station, monitoring station. And when it is gray color, it has no data. And when it is uh, orange color, it has only the level, no flow. Okay. And then where it is green, it has level and flow. Uh, and yellow means it has flow, but no level. So most probably we cannot do much with this data. You can see here the coloring scheme uh, is gray color is no uh, data. Uh, whereas your uh, stations with level and flow, no flow are orange. Uh, stations with flow and no level is yellow, which means it has flow coming in, but no level. Uh, and the green is the best scenario, which we have both. So why is this? Because the fifth is not still over. So let's change the thing to um, daily and you'll see more coloring happen. But before that, uh, let me walk you through the other part of the right side. You have the date information and you have the stations. For so that particular date, you have 4,800 stations that are monitoring the data. Right? And it is given as states because here we have admin as the view boundary. If you change it to basin, then here, here it will be as Ganges Basin, uh, Kaveri Basin, etc. I'm just going to click it so that you can see it. So within the basin, how the data is organized, you can see here, you see that the Brahmaputra Basin, Kaveri Basin. Then you have the river network along each river, how much data is there. And that is going to be again populated here and you can see the number of stations also change. I'm going to keep it as admin again. Because in admin view, you have the state boundaries and the state agencies also playing a vital role. Okay, so that is how you could uh, tweak the right hand side uh, to showcase what you want to uh, look at in terms of uh, have the boundaries. Okay, and what you see is total number of stations and number of manual stations and telemetry stations. Telemetry means it, it relays the information at once. Whereas manual, you have to go and collect the data and come. The telemetry is kind of expensive and energy consumptive also because it has to have monitoring networks placed within the system to relay the data. Okay. So I'm going to do uh, the right side is done almost because you have the number of stations and stuff. Uh, and if I go to one, let's say Chhattisgarh, you have 61 stations out of which 58 are manual, three are telemetry. When you click a particular state on the right hand side, that state zooms in. And then you could see that there are different regions, Bastar, for example, let's click Bastar and only the Bastar um, stations are. Now, when you click the district, then you will see the source of the stations, CWC, state agencies, etc. And then when you can pull the slider to the right, you can see the data, mid, max, uh, discharge, uh, all these things. So right now you see that there is no discharge data, only level data. Okay. Level data is not enough for you because how do we know 
uh, where the level is and how much discharge is coming. Let me draw it in a, in a blank page if possible. Okay, so here is a river which flows. Okay, and this is the ground level, okay, which is straight. And then I'm going to just crack it so that you can see it is a, a, a bedrock, the river bed. And here's we have the flow. So now, if I just have the level, what does it tell me about the river? We don't know how fast it's flowing, how slow it's flowing. We only know the level. Whereas your discharge is how much water comes in. And that flow is very important. It is a rate. It is a meter cube per second or per day, per hour. And that data is then later converted to a volume because you know per day you can multiply it per day and then uh, the uh, volume remains okay so this is how you should look at that the station can monitor the level or can monitor the discharge uh, it is okay to monitor the level but without discharge it is not useful you need to know the discharge okay Let's go back to India WRIS. We have done the right hand side. Now let's look at the left hand side uh, to see what we have. We have all agencies, and as I said, there are state agencies and central agencies. State is like, for example, your um, Damodar Valley Corporation, DWRID, SWRID, uh, and your uh, PWDs from uh, southern uh, regions, Tamil Nadu SW, surface water, etc. Okay, and then there's a Punjab new irrigation, Rajasthan surface water, uh, all these different different agencies are there. And there is an, a research entity which is NIH. So NIH was given the duty to uh, do a lot of research on these water uh, issues in India and also the uh, hydrology uh, pattern. So that is why it's called National Institute of Hydrology, which is located in Roorkee. And they also, with government agencies, especially CWC, they monitor these kind of rivers, the level, the quality, et cetera. Okay, so now we're going to do a daily uh, time step to show you how the data is. So I'm going to click a data from last year because this year's data is still coming, so let's not uh, push the, the database to give us this data. And that is why you don't see any green color for this data range. So the default data range is 1st June to 5th April, which is still today. And you don't see any green color because the data is still coming in. Okay, so I'm going to go 2021, Jan 1st, to December 31. Why is it daily? Because when rainfall happens, uh, and you don't capture it daily, then what is the use of it looking at it in a monthly time scale? You don't see that discharge in a monthly time scale. The rainfall would have come and left the system before the month. Okay, so it is very important to have the daily average or daily total uh, values for discharge. And I'm going to go December 31st. Then I click. So we have one year in total. It's still in Chhattisgarh, Bastar region, but I'll click India to zoom out. You can see here, if you want Chhattisgarh, I can click Chhattisgarh to zoom into Chhattisgarh, uh, but I'm going to go to India level to show uh, how the data is there. And remember, most of these data are, again, it does ask, uh, should I wait or exit the page? I'm just going to say wait. I know it's slow, so I'm just going to say let's wait for it. It has come. Okay, so I'm going to click India. Let's see how it goes out. So what I said is, uh, since a lot of these river uh, databases are transboundary, because you have, for example, the Ganges, it starts in China, Tibet, and then comes down to Nepal, and then it goes to India and uh, flows on. So uh, when you monitor this kind of uh, transboundary rivers, uh, it is a very sensitive data. One government doesn't release the data, so the, all the other governments doesn't release the data. So it, it comes to a sensitive point in a classified data, okay? So let me show you, for example, what I mean. 
I'm just going to go here and click this green dot. So I'm in the Ganges Basin and if you don't know where that location is, you can just zoom over and it will tell you the click on it, it will tell you the name. It's Bansi in Uttar Pradesh. I click the data and it's trying to populate, but it doesn't populate. Okay, so see, this is Nepal, this is India, this is right near the border. You could see that Bansi asterisk means locations are classified. Please log in to access data. You can click here, set up an account, and log in. Most of the data you can still get it, but if it is too sensitive or they say even with login you cannot get, then you'll have to communicate with NIH on this data and get it. Okay. So for now, I'm just going to say that there's no data here because saying it is classified and sensitive uh, is equivalent to say there is no data for you to use it in the research book. So that is one point, but all you can do is you can click the next point. You can see another uh, Kathari Uttar Pradesh. Let's see if they have declassified it, but no, it is also classified. I'm going to an orange level, which has only the level and no flow not much useful but still that is also not uh, freely available so there's a lot of sensitive data that is going around uh, which cannot be accessed okay so it says please log in you can click here login and then access the data but again i'll leave it to you if you want to do your login or not and the other data sets which i'm going to show you don't have to log in okay so let me uh, go to india level so the date is going to be same now I'm going to go to the India level, which will take some time. And you see more and more green uh, color coming up. Okay, so now again, it's back to the states. So I'm going to click a particular state, uh, let's say Tamil Nadu. And Coimbatore has a lot of good um, manual stations. So let's say six stations in Coimbatore. I hope we can get one uh, with level and uh, the uh, stage and discharge. So each time I click, it goes and now I don't know which one this green one is. So I can just go here, it says Bala Samutram and then I just click the Bala Samutram. And then slowly the data is populating. Now it is not turning into classified or red. And again, it is part of India, integral part of India. Uh, there's no transboundary nature to it. So it can still be um, collected. So within India also, we do have some data which is classified. And that could be near the dam sites or the dam data uh, and or between the states which is under litigation. Okay, so here it says green, which means both level and flow should be there, but there's no flow. It's only level. You can see it's a very straight level. And this is where sometimes your data is said that it is having data, but it is not enough data. So you should just ignore that point. I'm going to Taini. I'll show you in Kerala, there's a lot of good data that has been uh, supported. And you can see the agencies are the same. It's just a CWC, but just in some locations, the data has been collected well, whereas in other locations, maybe it is not coming in a good fashion. So I've clicked the data to show you how uh, the data looks like, and it is just getting populated. Beautiful. So you can see here, uh, every day, the yellow line is the last 10-year average flow in QMAX. So I'm just going to click this out because I want to see the current flow. And the current flow is very less, which means only two days in that particular year, there has been flow recorded. You can have the last 10 year average, uh, but it doesn't make sense for you, right? We want the current flow. And so that is how you should look into each station and remove the station from your research if it doesn't have the data, okay? So all you have is the level and uh, current flow. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to click to India back and then uh, click Kerala because I did find a lot of stations, as I said, uh, with flow and uh, uh, discharge uh, levels. 
and most of the telemetry stations have both. The manual stations have very limited data. Okay, so uh, for example, here your total stations and then total number of manuals. Okay, so if there is a big difference, then we have telemetry. So here, for example, um, yes. Alapula, there's one station and that one station is uh, telemetry. So hopefully it has the uh, data. So it is taking some time to load. So what you see here is all most of these agencies are CWC because the river is still a central government property. Then you can you can have uh, state agencies build dams and other structures, uh, but at the end of the day, it is still integral part of the uh, central government's exercise. So that is where you could see some data still being monitored, uh, whereas uh, other data are not showing up in this page like your level and discharge should show, but only level is showing. So maybe I think we should just go back further. They have not processed it. So from level, they will process it into discharge. So maybe the data is not processed. So we can go back again to see if uh, they have uh, some older data that can be processed. So for example, if this doesn't come up, I wanted to show you a live exercise of this data uh, here. You could see that this is a big error, right? How can flow be so uh, high, the level, and suddenly jump to zero? Okay, it was 90 and then suddenly zero. Maybe it got fully uh, depleted, but still that cannot explain such a big jump. I'm going to click uh, 2018, the same date. So three, four years back. And a shorter date so that we could look at uh, the flow. So I'm taking a very short time. See, this, this is the other thing. When, when you run the whole date scenario, then the whole of India, the map is running and it's fetching the data. That is why you see a big time, you can see the blue line crossing. Uh, and when it crosses to here, it is zero. If you don't see the blue line moving, then you should better stop the program and then refresh it. Okay, so now it's stopped, but I'll give it a minute uh, because it might be ending uh, the thing. So it says, Wait, I'll go to go to wait because I know it has been working uh, from today. Only some uh, data point was not working. So I'm just going to wait for it a little more seconds and then you'll see the data coming up. Okay, there it is. And you can see the data in more green color. Okay, so I'm just going to click one more green agency and it won't take time. It will just quickly come because the number of days is minimum. Okay, I just picked three months. Uh, so daily data for three months. So this is how you should look at data for your work. And trust me, even though you have 3,000, 4,000 stations, not all stations will have all the data. So you will have to find the, for, your, for example, your district or village, one data point from the government, which is good. And from that, you should build a story. Okay, uh, or go to the NIH or other agency, CWC agency office, and you could write a letter to your educational institution and collect the data. Data collection is another game. Okay, so here this level is given, which looks uh, fine. Okay, it looks fine as in uh, you know that this level uh, is trustworthy because it fluctuates. A level has to fluctuate. If it is straight, it can be only a straight line when it is a dam. Okay. Last 10 years, I don't need, um, uh, and then last 10 year flow also, I don't need. Now you could see the flow, the current year flow is going up and then beautifully coming down and zero and then a small blip. So which means it has been moving across and then coming down. So which, which is kind of agreeable, right? And Nilishwaram is a good station. Uh, there has been a paper from our group on Nilishwaram uh, uh, water uh, station. So only some stations are good and they collect 
data for a longer time. Okay. And then I'll just now complete the exercise by showing how to download it, which all of you know by now. You just click the arrow mark, which is pointing down, symbolizing the uh, download option. And then it will ask you your email, your name, and then your academic qualification uh, or why you want to use the data. So you could say that I'm, I'm using it for research, academic, or I can, I'm government, non government, that is fine. If it is non-government, it might ask you some more data on why you need the data. Okay, so same here, you could see the jumping of river patterns, which is very important and needed for this kind of exercise. Okay, so I'm moving the level off. It's kind of slow, not allowing me to do it. But again, you could see the point, right? So now the blue line is coming, uh, which is the last year flow. I don't need the last year flow. I need the current year flow and the level. The level is converted to a flow, remember? So when there is zero, for example, I'm just going to pull it back. When there's zero or negligible level, there is no flow according to this model. Okay, and no flow or very less flow, which cannot be captured because of the high axis. But when you download the data, you could for sure look at the changes. So now you could see it much better. As I said, I don't need the last 10 year, uh, I don't need the uh, last year flow, I need the current year flow and how that relates to the level. So the level is given like this and for the level you have a flow. So this is being modeled into the system, okay? So that you could uh, use it for the hydrological water balance. Okay, so I'm just going to close this and then show you how to download the data. Click on download. Download as CSV. And it asks you these so academic. I'm an academician, so I'll say PC is my name, PC at gmail.com. And submit. Now you can watch the data. Okay, it will be in columns. You can take the data. All these things will come your last year, last year flow, etc. Okay, let me show you again. You can download and then get it as a CSV. Okay, so uh, it's asking me to save the file. Let me save the file and quickly open it for you. Now it's opening up. Um, it does take some time, but uh, yes. So I'm going to share the screen. Yeah. So now you could see my uh, Excel sheet. And you could see how the river authority name is given, the date range is given, and you should know that the lat long is not given. All these can be taken from the bottom menu, which we had earlier. And then you have the data on one thing, the last 10 year average, last 10 year flow, and then current year average and current year flow. So all there's a lot of data gaps, which is from our user end. Uh, but also there are some zero zeros, which is not true, uh, because it could be um, an error or uh, just the flow didn't happen. Thinking that the flow did not happen from 13 to zero in the last 10 years 
for the last year is not correct. Okay, these averages. And the current year shows a different pattern which is happening. Okay, so now you can show the different uh, years and all the data flow in your database. With this, I will conclude today's class. I will see you in the next class. Thank you.